The yowl and hiss of a cat might not be the sound you're used to, even if you have one, but that all can change drastically when it's time to take your feline to the vet. It's understandable why. After all, no one wants to be forcibly removed from their home and then experience a new space with no warning. Add that to the stress of a new human interacting with them and you can quickly realize that taking your cat to the vet is hard. That's why I put in a call to Jet the Vet Eater. His experience with animals of all sizes has given him the ability to make appointments for felines a little more streamlined. Jeb's here to break down what cat owners can do when the time comes for that next checkup to leave your furry feline friend a little less freaked out and hopefully save you from a perilous attack from Pretty Little Paws. Thanks for being here, Jet. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm really excited to share what we, the information we have to get to go over this. Okay, yeah. well, we have a special guest. Yes. This is Tom Broklaw, my cat. So before we even get kind of into the importance of keeping your pet calm, your cat calm, let's talk a little bit about the carrier so that we can get them out. Yes. Well, we're even going to rewind further back okay. than that. All so, right. and, and starting with the carrier at home, you know, really the, I think when you're trying to set up a good cat visit, it really begins at, it begins at home. And that can be you know, getting your carrier out like a day or two before the appointment even, because the cats are, they are smart creatures mm -hmm. and it doesn't take very many vet appointments for them to realize that when the carrier comes out, I'm getting loaded up and I am not gonna be good with this. And so setting the carrier out, giving them some treats in the carrier, making the carrier not a totally traumatic experience for them and kind of like working that whole that whole angle of like I say, making your cat feel safe in its carrier okay. is a big part of that. Instead of we pull the carrier out, we fight 15 minutes to getting our cat into it right before we drag them to the vet. And it just, it sets them there, it gets them keyed up and then we turn them loose to the veterinarian once we've gotten them already kind of like optimized. Yeah, for optimized yeah. for attack. I like that. And so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so this this specific carrier um, has a feature that I find to be very handy. There are some carriers that there's kind of like a lot of dog carriers. Um, they just have a door at the front. And for dogs, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Dogs are often not uh, um, using the carrier as a cave, whereas the cat very much is. It's their safe spot. They're in an unfamiliar area. They do not want to come out mm -hmm. at a vet clinic. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a carrier like this one that you can actually kind of open from the top and we can actually reach in and see Tom right here. Hey Hi, Tom. Tom, how are you buddy? And Tom is, he's ready to party. Um, and so, He's out here ready to explore. He's very curious. And so your, your veterinarian is going to kind of uh, uh, remove Tom from his carrier. And oh, then the best it. thing to do is to have something that the cat is very interested in. So we have some, have some treat items here. Hey, Tom, be a brave boy. Yeah. Would you like some cheese? And so we are able to kind of distract Tom with a little bit of some uh, treats that kind of give him something to think about that he likes. And I'll actually let you okay. kind of feed those to him here. And, and this is just kind of like an example of kind of like what an exam would consist of where we work up to Tom We say, hey, Mr. Burroughclaw, how are you doing today? Let's talk about why it's so important to have a calm cat though. Um, like why it's a benefit oh, to you. Yes, so, so yeah. Um, First of all, we're, we are trying to, in a, in a normal routine appointment, we're trying to assess what's normal, you know? And so if you bring your cat in in a state of extreme distress, A, we're not able to, even if there, it's a healthy routine appointment, we're not able to assess what your cat looks like when it is healthy. And a lot of animals come to the vet because they're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And that means that we're going to need to potentially get blood from them, potentially get a urine sample from them, potentially take x-rays of them, which means that we're going to have to handle them quite a bit. And if we start off with a cat that's already ready to bite us and scratch us mm -hmm. prior to even starting, we may have to cancel your appointment and send you home with some sedatives prior to the next appointment just because it's it's just not safe for us to handle the cats. Sure. You mentioned that the uh, carrier can be like this one and that they like it to be like a cave almost. Yeah. Would it be beneficial if it was like this that you can see through it to put a blanket or something over yeah. it? Yeah, and that's another thing too is that like depending on how like stressed out they are, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, we can uh, we can also um, uh, kind of decrease their their like stimulation by covering it with a blanket. So there's they have less experience of like what's going on in the ex exterior mm -hmm. world, um, just because that can be just like a little bit less scary for them. Sure. And sometimes you can even like say we don't know if he'll like peanut butter or not, but sometimes you can even just like smear some some uh, snacks out there on a little bit of a lick mat. Oh. And it will kind of give them something to kind of work on and be distracted by. Um, and yeah, it just kind of helps make the appointment um, uh, that much calmer if there's if there's other things to do. Other things that we, we all like to have in the room with these guys is to have some towels. There's like a feel away pheromone mm -hmm. um, that's kind of helps to be calming and we can spray that on the towel and put that towel over your cat. This mm -hmm. is something you can get off of Amazon. Um, oh, Tom hates towels, oh, I don't know why. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. But, and, uh, every, and every cat's different, you know. Okay. Um, is there a different time of the day that would be uh, where the cats would be calmer? You know, I think that I, it, it kind of, that d depends on the cat. Okay. Um, I, I think that uh, in general, the biggest thing is just to make sure that, um, that uh, if they, the best things that we can do in, in it, for a cat that may be, that we're, especially for like, hey, kind of anxious, doesn't like going into the carrier from like, oh, we, the car trip that we took, is to talk to your veterinarian about that and say, I have a cat that gets pretty anxious. It doesn't like car rides. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just nervous what our appointment might look like. Um, do you have anything that can help with that? And um, so Tom today, he's on um, uh, 300 milligrams of gabapentin that he received last night and also received his dose this morning around 7 a.m., a few hours ahead of his appointment. Mm -hmm. And Tom's a pretty chill cat to begin with, but it is giving him an even more even keel. He's not focused on all of the this TV studio. He's just, he's kind of just, you know what, food sounds amazing right now. I'm not scared, I just want some snacks. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like our goals is to like, you know, make our cats just a little bit less spicy when they come to the vet clinic. And sometimes, you know, talking to your veterinarian and asking if they would, uh, if they would like to, if, um, if they had some ideas about a potential medication regimen that might help ease them and have them calm um, prior to the appointment can just help facilitate everything and make everybody's now, day a lot easier. Okay, real quick before we run out of time, yeah. tell me again about vets because cat bites can be very dangerous. It's yeah. one of the leading causes of injuries on the job for oh, veterinarians. absolutely. And so it really is a yes. pretty big deal. Yeah, and so so cat bites are, are, um, are very concerning because because cats, actually cats are much more likely to bite veterinary professionals than dogs are. Um, part partially because they're they're stressed out. Um, and then the other thing too about cats is, is that they carry specific kinds of bacteria, Pastorella multocida being one of the more common ones, um, but it can, it cr can create really bad abscessation and really bad infections. Um, where I, I know, for instance, uh, one of the technicians uh, at the ER here in town in the past six months has had to go to the hospital and receive IV antibiotics from a simple cat bite on a finger. And um, you never know who they're going to like or who they're not. But Tom Brokla, you want to say goodbye, Tom? Tom, thank you for coming. Oh, Hi, Jethavet. Thank yes. you for making me calm. Oh, thank yes. You. So calm and so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs>